minority backgrounds in English schools, and if the situation is to get any better, then many more people from diverse backgrounds need recruiting. It's hard to get a totally accurate picture of the current situation because of the way data is collected, but we know that 27% of school pupils in England are from black or minority ethnic backgrounds. However, in 2016, only 7% of teachers would be ME. The government puts the figures slightly higher at 13%, but that is because they include white, non-British teachers from other minorities in that number, like Irish teachers, for example. Now, research from BBC Yorkshire has found that schools in England would need to recruit an extra 69,000 ethnic minority teachers to reflect the diversity within the school population. Let's talk to various people about this. Dr. Zubeda Hack from the Running Me Trust. She's researched this issue extensively. Toby Martins Ojo works in a London school coordinating volunteers and she's written about the lack of black teachers. Patrick Dempsey's with us. He's the diversity lead for Teach First. That's the recruiter responsible for 5% of all teacher placements in England. Alana Gay is the deputy head of Lee Valley Primary School in London. And Nikki Cullingham-Smith is teacher who is in Ross on Y. Uh, welcome all of you. Thank you very much for coming on the programme. Right, obviously I'm going to ask you why you think there is such a shortage. Um, you've done research, uh, Spader. Tell us why. Um, well, it's it's actually across a piece. I mean, not starting from the beginning in terms of recruitment. Um, the government haven't done a great deal uh, well, or done very well in terms of recruiting. So only one in ten of, of the new recruits are from ethnic minority backgrounds. But actually, where the, where the story is really interesting and worrying, if you like, is around retention. In other words, the teachers that stay within the occupation. And now increasingly the research is showing that teachers are more likely to leave. So Why, why is that? Uh, <clears throat> well, there, there are lots of reasons. Um, first of all, it's important to know that Approximately 75% of black and ethnic minority teachers have told us in our surveys, and they're very large surveys, um, that they're thinking of leaving. Um, now, the reasons are around um, discrimination, sadly, around discrimination, um, around workload, and around pay discrimination as well. So give us some examples. So, um, for instance, well, workload, I mean, the, the government have introduced an awful lot of bureaucracy into the system. And that's, uh, that's and, and, and across, that's the, across board. the board. So that's concentrating and that's the having discrimination. An impact. But where there's a disproportionate impact, if you like, um, with BME teachers, is around day-to-day um, -day discrimination in schools. And what I mean by that is there's the sort of, the sort of policies and practices that, that are keeping them out. An example of that would be, for instance, um, I mean, and this is a rather a sad example, but um, a lot of the teachers, black and ethnic minority teachers in our surveys, talked about how they were given behavioural responsibilities instead of more sort of intellectual responsibilities. And the issue with that is when it comes to pay performance related matters, um, behaviour is not counted as much as taking over a maths class and t getting that maths class from a lower grade to a higher grade. But unfortunately, because they've been misdirected into behavioural issues based on stereotypes. Right, so, stereotypes. so a head teacher would see a black male teacher and say, you'd be good to be in charge of discipline. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Alana, you're a deputy head. Yeah. Um, are you, can you relate to some of these, some of the things that Zabeda is saying? Yes, I think that's also come out for us um, and within my experience itself that when you go into teaching as an ethnic minority, there is that strand where they prefer to put you at a pastoral level. So what we found um, at BMED, which I am a part of, we found that the vast majority of our teachers find that they're placed into this pastoral box where they're told you're able to relate to the children on that level, so why don't you help take care of them? That then leads to them taking the lower sets in those classrooms and therefore having behaviorally difficult children contained within a classroom that that teacher expected to get achievement from them and not being given the opportunity or the fair distribution of that workload to everyone. What about cultural issues, going to the pub after school with your colleagues? For some ethnic minorities that would be an issue because I mean, part of British culture is that in the pub you'll have decisions and you'll have those discussions and you feel excluded from those parts of those discussions. Okay. And then once you start self-selecting to exclude yourself, then later on everyone else just starts excluding you. Or if you have certain requirements for your culture that you would like to take a part of, let's say you're going out for the team meal, then because everybody has to consider you suddenly become the problematic one within the group in order to socialize. And in teaching, it's a very, very social structure. If you don't have that social support, you will not survive in teaching because okay. you need to have that in order to reinforce 
um, all the work that you're doing already. Let me bring Nikki in, who is in Ross on Why. Why do you think there is such a shortage, Nikki? What's your own view? Um, well, when I grew up, I never saw any ethnic minority teachers um, in my school from primary through to secondary. It was because of my parents' direction that put me on the path towards further education. And I think that that's a real kind of missing link there. And even in my schools, I've been quite fortunate to be invited onto the senior leadership team. But when I go to meetings and I'm in a more rural area, I find that there's not that spread of ethnic minorities to maybe give those pupils role models to kind of say I can aspire to be just like that person yeah. and I can go into that form of education I never had that mm -hmm. and I know that certain pupils will gravitate towards me and they're probably gravitating in the first instance because they finally have someone to, to identify with. Okay Patrick what about your view? That's absolutely the key point I think those figures that you mentioned seven percent uh, of teachers in the teacher workforce and um, there's 25 30 percent depending on how you look at it uh, black and minority ethnic pupils there's a gap there and that gap is expressing itself in exactly that a lack of role models um, and it's a self-perpetuating problem if you've got a lack of role models people in your primary classes are not thinking oh i'll go and be an educator yeah. they're thinking my role models are doing something else yeah. so they're off doing something else okay. and we need to break that kind of self-perpetuating right i agree i think just going off patrick's point a lot of second generation immigrants aren't really drawn to teaching because a lot of them might have grown up poor um, and you're drawn to jobs that pay you more and teaching doesn't pay that well and i think it's just also linked to the fact that if you're not seeing them in your classroom if you're not seeing them in those leadership roles you're not going to want to go to there um, and i think it's just that cycle isn't it but I just really think that you're not you're not really drawn to it because when I was writing the article for Black Ballad and I was speaking to a lot of um, I was having a search for black male teachers and a lot of them was like teaching doesn't pay well for me um, and I'd rather go somewhere else mm. and I think that's a real issue. Okay. Sorry, go. Cool. I would say it's self selection. Yeah. Selecting yourself out it is an issue, yeah. but I don't think we should fall into that false trap where we think that's what that's what holding be it black and ethnic minority people back from applying for teaching i mean there are push and pull factors and it goes it, it relates to if you like the story within schools where you know you have to ask questions like are the government uh, is the national college of school leadership are they recruiting in the right places are they advertising in the right places are they making the job attractive overall yeah. um are they encouraging black and ethnic minority people to apply? It might not be a job that you've thought about, but, you know, has it been pitched to you? I think it absolutely, um, absolutely sits at that recruitment level. That's how yeah. we break that cycle. Mm -hmm. um, we are actually 7%, uh, Victoria said, 25% uh, of, of mm -hmm. pupils in classrooms. We are 16% of our cohort that started a couple of weeks ago uh, are from black and ethnic minority backgrounds. So we're doing a bit better. We're still not doing as well as we want to do. Mm. Um, but we're doing exactly the things that you're talking and, and about. And just assuming this, that, that they stay. Because see, this is where it gets really complicated. Because even, what's happening at the moment is, even when the recruits are coming in, the evidence is suggesting that they're not staying. Mm. So there's actually quite a high dropout rate after three years, I think, with yeah. even with Teach First, a high dropout rate amongst black and ethnic minority teachers. Nikki, I can see you want to come in here. And then so we'll I, I think it. sometimes also what can happen is um, the advertisement doesn't always give a clear picture. So I know that I personally have been used for a poster girl at times of areas. So it gives that illusion that we do have black and ethnic minorities in these areas or their educational studying. That's not always the case. I know personally I have been the only black girl on that course or in that environment, yet I'm the first to be selected to say, you know, be a part of it, as opposed to, just like we said, where are those advertisements going at? Where is that draw? Where is the careers advices at a lower level saying you can achieve and you can do this? And I think for me, it comes twofold. So you have that element where the recruitment process itself is very difficult because within ethnic minority communities if we think of the people when they had their experience of education it wasn't necessarily a positive one and because they haven't had a positive experience they then project those sort of prejudices that they experience onto their children and say well what i've got you you've got a good degree why do you want to go and teach do you know what education is about when you then sign up for the course you break that barrier you sign up for the course and you go and you're the only one you're again experiencing that sort of isolation where so you don't drew, have that support network. What drew you to the profession? 
Um, I love kids and I have a moral purpose in making sure that there's a change in education. And that's what keeps me there. And I think as well, that's a part of what's wrong with the advertising that goes in. When you advertise and say, come into teaching, you'll get 65,000 or however much money. When you're coming, if you're coming into teaching to be a millionaire, good luck with that. Yeah. It's not going to happen. If you're coming into teaching because you want to make a difference, because you can see that a change is necessary, that's when you're going to capture your ethnic minorities because they have come here to seek change. And we need to capture that and encourage them onto these courses and give them those role models. So I'd like to see Teach First put forward a lot more role models on their roster of trainers. Okay, yeah. so we've talked about role models. We've talked about different places to advertise, to attract new trainees. What else? What else? Could, could you suggest now to the government in order to attract more teachers from black and ethnic minority backgrounds? Well, they've got to go beyond what they're doing. I mean, at the moment, it's really piecemeal. So there's like an initiative here, and it might be a big, you know, snazzy campaign. Um, they've got the school, uh, the, the Leadership Equality and Equality Diversity and Fund. Diversity, yeah. um, so they, but they're all small in initiatives. Mm. And the thing is, if, I were, strategy, in government, no yeah, if I were in government, the question I would be asking myself is, I've had these initiatives since I've come in, and the figures haven't changed, you know, it was... Okay, well, let's give some ideas. We've got literally a minute and a half left. Cool. Other ideas? I think. I think there needs to be outreach. I think there is clearly black and ethnic minority teachers, but I know my personally, I've never had anyone say, you know, why haven't you got involved? Why, yeah. why do people not? I think they know we're there. Why not outreach to people that are getting in recently? I've been in teaching for six years. And hear from them and get them involved. Them on the the chalk face, ground level, talking to people, getting people involved at universities. Yeah, and that yeah, constant level of support. Yeah, and you also need to show it from the top as well, because yeah. Ofsted don't have a good track record on diversity, neither does the DfE, neither yeah. does Ofqual, apparently yeah. it's reported. They all need to make the large majority of multi-academy trust universities, they all need to make that change as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's not just a bottom-up approach, it needs to be a top-down approach. Yeah. I don't think the yeah. government needs to follow through with what, what the initiatives that they bring forward. Yeah. Because this conversation always comes up again. Mm -hmm. And then the government brings something out and then you drop it. And then it comes back up again and then you drop it. I think okay. you, you need to follow it through. I've got a statement here from the Department for Education. The proportion of teachers from minority ethnic groups in our schools is rising. The department provides a range of initiatives to ensure there are no barriers to any individual, including black and minority ethnic groups, joining the teaching profession. Ask them what the it, range is. Yes. Range. Yeah, you need to go back and ask them what the range is and what accountability they have to show the impact of the range. Because even the equalities grant, when we think about it, and when the course is finished, what is the, what is the follow-up that encourages those teachers to progress? Okay. Thank you, all of you. Thank you very much. I know there is so much more you can say. I can see it in your face, <laughs> I can see it on Nikki's face. But, but time has moved on. But thank you very much. Thank you for your input. Thank you. Thank, thank you for having me. Still to come on the programme, lawyers for the parents of the terminally ill baby Charlie Gard are back at the High Court. We'll be there live for the latest. And the Royal College of Radiologists is seeking assurances from the government that leaving the European Union will not affect...